Hello friends, this is Odds, despite the state of the economy. And to this day, one of the most common questions that I get on my stream is, Odds, how do I farm blood points? It just keeps happening. Obviously, everybody wants to get blood points, I get it. Um, but every video, or almost every video that I've seen on the subject, including the ones that I made in the past, is either outdated, or focuses on the wrong things, or forgets and overlooks a very important detail. So today, we're gonna cover absolutely everything first. Um, the quick things. Uh, there are three currencies in this game. RXLs, um, Iridescent Shards, and then Blood Points. The RXLs are the ones that you have to buy with money. There's no real way to save or farm these. You just want to either buy them in bulk, which makes them a bit cheaper, or wait until there are discounts so that whatever you buy is a little bit cheaper. But this is very simple. Iridescent Shards also comes up very often. How do you save? There's no way to farm Iridescent Shards. You need to play games. What we do know, however, is that if your games take too long, you don't get more. And if they take too short, it's not efficient. So play normal games. Don't drag them out too quickly. Don't play them too fast. And you will get this as you play the game. There's no way really to get them quicker. Every now and then they do events and special login rewards that can give you a few of these, but that's pretty much the only way. And then we get to blood points, which is the main currency of the game. And now we're going to focus on that. How do you get blood points? And what is the best role to do it? The best role to get blood points by far is Survivor, believe it or not. If you play Survivor and have all of your friends join you and all of you use offerings to get more and more and more blood points, the ones that stack together, that is by far the best way to get blood points. Other than that, it's certainly killer. Killer is the most stable way to get blood points. And after that, if you have to play solo survivor, yeah, that, that you can still do it. Some games you'll die super quickly. You have no control over that. So yeah, survivor friends, fully stacked, killer, and solo survivor. That's the hierarchy of who gets the most points. Uh, some tips that you definitely want to keep in mind. Uh, super simple. Don't forget to check your dailies and uh, remove them if they're not helpful. Do your dailies as much as you can. If you see that you don't have an archive equipped, go to the archives and equip them. Yeah, you know, Make sure that you have one for the role that you're playing. You can save these archives and then cash them in later when you need blood points on demand, so it's really, really useful. Uh, on top of that, uh, you want to make sure that you always equip offerings. Every time you don't equip an offering, you're getting less points per game, so always do it. And it goes without saying that you want to be efficient in your blood web. If you're not looking for anything specific, buy the cheapest uh, things, get through uh, the edge of the blood web as soon as possible, buy a perk, so that the entity begins to eat up the rest of the blood web faster. And if you identify that one part of the blood web is like a single branch, you can try to buy the other stuff so that it gets consumed faster. And this will save you blood points over time. But with that aside, now let's go first over Survivor. Uh, there will be timestamps below. And then over Killer, what are the most effective builds and basic strategies to get the most points? Let's go. All right, so on the Survivor side of things, it's very simple. Survivors get points in four distinct categories, and each of them maxes out at 8,000 points. Your objective is to get as close to those 8,000 points on everything. Uh, some of them are much easier than others, so we're going to have some perks here and there to help maximize the ones that are harder. And then at the end, we'll have offerings, and we're going to live forever to multiply the total and get even more points. So our build should look something like this. First of all, uh, we're gonna make sure that we have an offering. Super, super important. Uh, it doesn't really matter which item you bring. All of them are really, really good. Uh, with flashlights, you can counter specific killers and have a lot of bonus. Uh, with maps, you can find lots of items and have extra objective. With a key, you can open the hatch, get extra points for escaping through the hatch, which is um, objective, and then obviously ensure your survival, so it's really good. Uh, with with some add-ons, it can also help you uh, last longer in chase. You can get a lot of sabotages and get a lot of bonus by sabotaging random uh, hooks throughout the match, even if it doesn't really do much. Uh, you hit more skill checks with uh, toolboxes, so you get extra points. It's all really, really, really good, but if I have to choose the best, Medkits. Medkits allow you to heal yourself, which gives you uh, survival, which is one of the hardest categories to level up. And you have uh, also additional points from using this add-on, um, pair it with another set of 16 charges, and every time you hit a skill check, you get a ton of extra points on survival, which is really, really good. And also altruism if you're doing it on someone else. So medkits are maybe the best, but any item will do. Uh, on perks, we definitely want to bring We're Gonna Live Forever, a teachable from David. This is the survivor equivalent of barbecue and chili. You put this on and you try to rescue other people from hooks 
safely. So it's a good idea to pair it with borrowed time to ensure that it's safe. And take hits for them and occasionally maybe flashlight save or pallet save and you get stacks, stacks, stacks. As soon as you get one, you're already getting more points. But if you get to four, you duplicate your points at the end of the game along with any other offering that you or your friends brought. So that is amazing. On top of that, it's a really solid perk that allows you to pick up Subaru from the ground. It's really good against many, many killers and situations. Prove Thyself is another perk that I think is amazing. On top of being a really good perk that allows you to do generators faster, it also gives you extra points from co-op actions. For the most part, this helps on gens. If you do one generator together with another survivor, you basically have already uh, reached out halfway uh, to max points on, on objective. It's incredible. You do that and then maybe a gen later and an, an exit gate perhaps, and you max out almost every game. And it also considers co-op actions if you have two people healing a third person. So if two of you heal a third person with Prove Thyself, you also get extra altruism from this. That is just amazing. Uh, then we have boons. Boons are the best way to get bonus. Even if you are not very good in chase and you don't trust yourself to run the killer for a long time, if you set up a boon, you get 1,500 bonus. And then you can do it again and again and as many times as you can squeeze it in a game. And that is just a match. It is just super, super, super good. On top of being a really good perk by itself. If people uh, concentrate on one area and you get to heal them, you also get altruism. If you heal yourself, even without any medkits, now you get survival. So that is just super, super good. And my final perk that I would recommend is Decisive Strike. Um, decisive Strike allows you to become the obsession. Uh, if you die as the obsession, you get a thousand points. And if you escape as the obsession, you get a thousand five hundred points on survival. So even if you die, you get survival points, which is super, super, super good. And it's also a really strong anti-tunneling perk that ensures that you won't die too quickly without getting chased too much. So I think this overall is the best build that you could bring. Um, then again, uh, you might not have everything here, so there are some great alternatives. If you don't have proof thyself or if you struggle with skill checks, you could instead bring a perk called... Uh, stakeout from David Tapp. This perk allows you to get easy skill checks and it can make you get a lot of extra points on skill checks if you're not good at them, which goes towards objective. And if you have the medkit that we mentioned earlier with the surgical suture, you will get basically uh, guaranteed uh, great skill checks on, on your heals, which will give you tons of points. So that is a very decent alternative. Uh, obviously, um, uh, another alternative to Circle of Healing is to just run the killer a lot or cleanse a lot of bones or even bring perks like Any Means Necessary. Any Means Necessary allows you to drop a pallet and then immediately pick it up, giving you 500 points um, just basically for free, even if it's just randomly and the killer's not there. So that's 500 points of bonus that are really, really welcome. Uh, again, you can also bring a toolbox um, and make it silent. So it doesn't make any noise at all when you break a, a hook. And you can just break hooks randomly throughout the game and get 500, 500, 500 bonus. So that's also an alternative. Now, if you don't have Decisive Strike, uh, For the People, which is a perk from Zarina, is super, super good. You can do a Transfusion, which gives you 500 points of bonus. And you become the Obsession. So after that, if you die or escape, you get 1,000 or 1,500 more. So if you're really smart, you could even... Use for the people on someone, escape as the obsession, and then they use for the people on someone else, and then they escape as the obsession, so you could get a lot of points like this. Uh, Deliverance is also an amazing perk. If you ever get it to work, you will uh, unhook yourself and get a ton of points. I think it's 1,500 points uh, from, um, from unhooking yourself. And those, those go into survival, which is super, super useful. Uh, but then again, if you have this perk, you are denying these points from your teammates. So I don't recommend this if you're farming with friends. But that aside, uh, this for the most part is the best way to, to farm points. And it should be pretty damn simple. And this works really, really well. And there's a ton of alternatives. So you should have no problem. The most important part, as I said, is to use offerings with your friends and make sure that you don't die too quickly. And next up, we're going to look at this from the killer side. Much like survivors, killers have four categories that they need to fill up, uh, but uh, they are a little bit simpler. They don't need to compete with other survivors, and they obviously cannot die very early in the match, so for the most part, doing killer is a lot simpler. 
Um, you want to make sure that you kill as many people as possible. That's how you fill up sacrifice. You need to understand how each killer has their own individual power, and that's deviousness for the most part. And then you kick as many gens, break as many walls as possible without throwing the game, obviously. Maybe close the hatch, maybe open the gates at the end. Do any action you can to get extra points. Uh, and obviously, chase survivors, and you'll, you'll fill up most of these pretty easily. Now, uh, some killers do get more points than others for similar playstyle. It's still not a huge deal. I would still play whichever killer I had most fun with and I was most comfortable with. But if you really, really want to know, uh, I actually run a bit of a simulation and I adjusted it with the best knowledge I could gather. And this is what I came up with. And this basically translate into, translates into this following tier list. Uh, the killers up top are both very strong and generate blood points very easily. Um, the next tier of killers are pretty good, but they are a little bit trickier. They're still very decent. Then we have killers that are kind of average and a few killers at the bottom that are not super ideal and generating blood points with them is a little bit trickier. Uh, some of these killers um, obviously are stronger than others. Some of them are weaker than others. At the end of the day, it's better that you play whichever killer you get the best results with. Uh, they all have unique quirks. For example, some of them have meme add-ons that you can bring to get extra points. Uh, some of them can spam their ability to get extra points and generate points just, just by doing the same action over and over and over again. Um, but this is not something that you have to concern yourself with a lot, in my opinion. Uh, just a very basic guideline. I will tell you one thing not to do, however, and one trap that you can fall for. Do not bring mores or anything that allows you to end the game too prematurely. It's not a horrible thing if you more someone, uh, but it's almost always better to instead just bring some blood point uh, based offering and try not to slug people and try not to leave them dying on the ground. You want to get as many hooks as possible and draw out the game as long as possible. Don't try to end it prematurely. You might be tempted to run these meme add-ons that give you extra blood points, but these blood points don't go past the cap. So I highly, highly advise against them. They are typically a waste of your time. There are a few killers with strong meme add-ons that I could recommend, um, but even those don't really need them. So for the most part, ignore these. You will also know that there are many perks that give you extra blood points like Beast of Prey and Distressing. These extra blood points do not go past your 8,000 cap. And for that reason, I highly, highly recommend against using them. Um, they don't really help you get past the cap, and for the most part, they are very bad perks. So unless you really know what you're doing and you have them as part of a logical build, I would avoid them. Uh, a build for you as killer could be as simple as this. Make sure you don't have those meme add-ons and always bring barbecue and chili. Barbecue and chili is the cornerstone of farming blood points with killer. If you hook every survivor a single time, and it's not too difficult to do this, uh, this perk is just incredibly good at duplicating your blood points consistently. Even if you lose the game, you will still get a lot. So your number one priority is to hook everybody once. Um, my next best suggestion is to draw out the game and make sure it doesn't go too quickly. Use whichever perks help you um, make the game last longer. If you have nothing and you're starting out, Jolt is a great perk. Every time you down a survivor, gens begin to regress and you do damage to them. And this gives you 100 points in destruction. Um, so it's a nice perk to start with. Eventually, you can add on to or replace this with stronger gen regression perks. It's also never a bad idea to have some trump card for the end of the game, such as Know It, especially if you're a beginner, or No Way Out, perks that trigger near the end game or that give you extra time so that you can make sure that you find every survivor, get extra kills, and make sure you find that one survivor that you didn't hook. So Barbecue absolutely gets the most points out of that. Uh, you do this and follow every other step that we've talked about and you'll get the most blood points and it really is as simple as that. Oh, and one more thing that I forgot to mention at the start. The DVD social media often gives out codes that you can go into the store page and redeem. And these often give quite a few blood points. Uh, there are some Twitter accounts that remind people of these codes when they are available because they are typically limited in time. Uh, and you can also stop by my stream and use command codes. Me and my mods try to update it so that it shows whichever codes are available all the time. Um, so yeah, this and doing tutorials can give you a lot of blood points if you're starting out. Uh, but whether you're starting out or you're new, please enjoy Dead by Daylight and go outside every now and then, yeah? I'll see you in the next one.